Have you ever wondered why some memories stick with us, while others seem to fade away almost instantly? What is it that makes our memory function the way it does? Let's start by understanding what memory is. Memory, in its simplest form, is our brain's filing system. It's a process of encoding, storing, and retrieving information, allowing us to learn and adapt from past experiences. And it's integral to our daily lives, shaping who we are and how we interact with the world around us. Now, our memory can be divided into three main types, sensory, short-term, and long-term. Sensory memory is the briefest, registering information from our senses for less than a second. Short-term memory, or working memory, holds a small amount of information for about 20 seconds. Then there's long-term memory, our brain's vast storage area where information can be kept for minutes to a lifetime. Understanding these types of memory gives us a foundation to delve deeper into the fascinating world of memory. Our brain, a complex network of neurons and synapses, serves as the control center for memory. But what are neurons and synapses? Neurons or nerve cells are the basic building blocks of the brain. And synapses? They're the junctions where neurons meet, allowing them to communicate. Imagine the brain as a bustling city. In this city, the neurons are like buildings and the synapses are roads connecting them. The traffic flowing on these roads, that's the electrical and chemical signals the language neurons use to chat with each other. When you form a memory, neurons fire off these signals. The synapses carry the signals from one neuron to another, like a courier delivering a message. And each time you recall that memory, the same neurons fire again, retracing the same pathways. It's a fascinating process, isn't it? The intricate dance between neurons and synapses is the key to how our memories form and are stored. But how does our brain turn a momentary sensory experience into a lasting memory? Well, let's dive into the fascinating process of memory encoding. Imagine your brain as an intricate recording device. When you experience something, like the smell of fresh coffee or the sound of your favorite song, your brain works to convert that sensory information into a form it can use. This process is called encoding, and it's how your brain translates real-world data into electrical patterns your neurons can understand. Think of it as the brain's own unique language. Now, encoding is not just about translation, it's also about prioritization. The brain decides what information is important enough to be moved from short-term memory into long-term memory. It's like the brain's own version of sorting the wheat from the chaff. This intricate process of encoding is essential for memory formation. It's the brain's way of sorting, storing, and retrieving the countless experiences we encounter every day. Without it, each moment would be fleeting, lost as soon as it passed. Memory encoding is the essential first step in creating a lasting memory. Once a memory is encoded, the next step is storing it for future use. Memories are not stored in a single spot in the brain, but rather, they're scattered across different regions, each responsible for storing a specific aspect of that memory. Picture it like a puzzle, where every piece is stored in a different place, and when you recall that memory, your brain puts the pieces back together. One theory that helps us understand how this works is the memory consolidation theory. It suggests that when a memory is first formed, it's in a fragile state. But over time, through a process known as consolidation, these memories become more stable and are moved to long-term storage. A key player in this process is the hippocampus, a small region of the brain that acts like a memory hub. It helps in organizing memories and connecting them to our emotions and senses. Our brains are not just storage devices, but dynamic systems that consolidate and store memories. Retrieving a memory is like finding a book in a vast library. Just as you recall the location of a book on a specific subject, your brain retrieves memories when they're needed. This process involves two key methods, recall and recognition. Recall is like remembering the name of that book you read last summer, while recognition is akin to spotting a book cover you've seen before. Both processes work harmoniously, allowing us to retrieve information stored in our brain's complex networks. Now, let's talk about sleep. After a long day of acquiring new memories, your brain needs downtime to consolidate and store them for future retrieval. Sleep serves as this critical downtime. As you drift off, your brain works like a diligent librarian, organizing and cataloging the day's events. During the deepest stages of sleep, it strengthens the neural connections that form our memories. Sleep not only rejuvenates us physically, but also plays a crucial role in the consolidation of our memories. Unfortunately, memory is not always reliable. Forgetting is a common part of the memory process. 
It's not a flaw, but a necessary function, allowing us to discard irrelevant information. However, excessive forgetting can be influenced by factors such as stress, lack of sleep, and poor nutrition. More serious memory disorders like Alzheimer's disease involve significant, often distressing memory loss due to damage in brain structures vital for memory. The good news is, we can take proactive steps to improve our memory. Repetition solidifies memory traces, making recall easier. Association, linking new information to something familiar, also aids memory. For instance, associating a person's name with an image or characteristic can help you remember their name better. Moreover, maintaining a healthy lifestyle including regular exercise, balanced diet, and adequate sleep contributes to overall brain health and memory function. With a better understanding of how memory works, we can all take steps to improve our memory and keep our minds sharp.